So last year's uh, essay contest was based on answering the question of Atlas Shrug contains different types of businessmen, some who are heroes like Hank Reardon and Dagny Taggart, and some who are villains such as Oren Boyle and James Taggart. What's the differences between these types of businessmen? Is this a story, a celebration of business, and how does this relate uh, to the wider themes in the novel? So I think this is a particularly interesting question uh, because if you see how business people are portrayed in uh, the media and movies, I think, in particular, I always wind up joking about this with my kids because they'll you know, see something or hear about a movie, uh, anything from The Simpsons to uh, you know, Wall Street to The Wolf of Wall Street. Um, and then you get questions like, so basically your business is a lot of drug-induced orgies on the trading floor uh, and ripping off clients. Like, like, no, it's not exactly like that. Um, so, you know, I challenge anybody to come up with a uh, profession that's more, um, you know, beaten upon and negatively presented in, uh, in movies, I think, in particular. Uh, than, uh, than the business owner. That's pretty hard to find. So <clears throat> uh, the winner for this year's uh, essay contest is Samir Patel, uh, who did a great job answering this question. Uh, Samir is a research analyst at Bonanza Capital, which is a fantastic name for a fund in uh, Dallas, Texas, a uh, hedge fund focused on small cap equities. He approaches capital markets like he approaches life. Uh, identifying and analyzing opportunities for long-term wealth creation from the ground up with zero regard for consensus viewpoints and traditional theories. Uh, he's in the final semester of his MBA program at University of Texas in Dallas with concentrations in supply chain management and finance. Uh, Samir's a native Texan, aspiring novelist, a fan of the outdoors, and a major foodie. So congratulations, Samir. Good evening. It's, uh, it's a real honor to be here tonight. I can't express how grateful I am. So I know a lot of people who take a shot of whiskey when they need courage. You know the times I'm talking about, like when you're a kid from the suburbs who's been called up on stage to talk to a room full of really smart people after, uh, after those speeches. So yeah, those times it'd be nice to take a shot of whiskey, but I actually can't do that because I'm too young to drink. So instead, I just read Atlas Shrugged. See, here's the deal. I, I grew up middle class. My parents didn't have much money but they did teach me one valuable lesson. In America, no matter what anyone tells you, your success will be constrained only by your talent and your ambition. I took that lesson to heart. I started community college at 13. I obtained a National Merit Scholarship to Real College, the works. I could deal with kids calling me names, but what I couldn't take was adults telling me that my accomplishments meant nothing. Because to steal a phrase from our favorite politician, I didn't build that. They said I was supposed to be grateful for my blessings, to luck, to God, to society at large. I was supposed to be humble and accept that my ability and effort had nothing to do with my accomplishments. As a young teenager, it was too much to deal with and I was on the verge of quitting, becoming average, consigning myself to a life of mediocrity. But then I read Atlas Shrugged and I realized I was not alone. It gave me the courage to persevere. So on I went. At 19, I got the top score in the world on Bloomberg's finance test, and I got a job as an equity research analyst for a hedge fund. My personal account was outperforming the S&P by thousands of basis points. And then, for a second time, I nearly lost my desire to go forward. Why? The sheer prevalence of economic illiteracy best embodied by the Occupy Wall Street movement. I wondered where the bright line was. I mean, at what point did I magically go from being the kid who wrote the book on the American dream to being that evil, greedy, villainous one percenter who should be ridiculed, looted, drawn and quartered. It just didn't make sense. Knowing I was gonna be hated for the rest of my life, you know, it, it was so tempting to quit, to hide in the shadows, to be average, but then I reread Atlas Shrugged, and this time I didn't stop there. I read most of Ayn Rand's nonfiction, and that's when it all made sense for the first time. We aren't the villains, we're the heroes. 
To be clear, To be clear, I, I really don't consider myself to be an arrogant person. I mean, I'm fortunate to have a boss and numerous mentors who are incomparably better investors than I am. I learn a ton from them every day, and I know I still have a long way to go. But here's the thing. I know plenty of people, both younger and older than me, who have abilities I can never hope to match. Unlike those who subscribe to the collectivist altruist framework, I don't envy those people. I don't wish to subjugate their lives to my demands. I do not wish to shackle them to prevent them from competing with me. Instead, I respect them for their abilities and aim to emulate their positive qualities. Here's the really ironic part. The collectivists, those who supposedly dedicate their entire lives to helping others, they're the ones who are burning the world down. Cliff Asnes has some particularly good op-eds on this topic. But we, the capitalists, the objectivists, we're the ones who are building the world back up. And I have confidence that we can do that faster than they can tear it down. I am not yet Hankery Arden but I intend to be, and someday I will be. And I owe that to Atlas Shrugged, which on two separate occasions gave me the courage to persevere in a world that seeks to punish the successful. I'm extremely grateful to Mr. Baliasny for sponsoring the essay contest, and I look forward to helping the Ayn Rand Institute spread objectivism's undeniable truths, the supremacy of reason, and the success of capitalism. Thank you.